Hello everyone, and welcome to the second video on a Byte of Linux. In this tutorial, I'm going to be telling you the top 10 things to do after installing Ubuntu. So jumping right in, the first thing you should do is connect to a network. So on a computer, you can connect to a network by going over to the status bar at the top here and clicking on the icon with two arrows going in opposite directions. When you click on that, you should see dialog similar to this. And in here, you should see your networks. If you don't see it, you can go to Edit Connections, Add, and choose your type of network connection, whether it be Wi-Fi or Ethernet, or something else. Click Create, and then enter in the information for your device. So if you have Wi-Fi, you can enter in your security type, your password, and the name of your network, and you should click Save, and that will connect to the Wi-Fi. Internet on mine is already set up, but you can test it by going over to Mozilla, which is pre-installed, and going to any page. So in this case, I'm going to go to YouTube.com, and if it loads up, it means your network is properly set up. The second thing you should do after installing Ubuntu is to update all your software. Even though you might have installed the latest version of Ubuntu, it might not have all the latest software with it. So to get all the latest software, you have to go over to your launcher, which is this icon right here, click on it, and search software. So what you want to open is software updater, which is this icon right here. Once you click on that, the app should automatically start checking for any software updates, so it will ref refresh its list and download any updates. Once it's been downloaded, it should show you this, and this will show how large the downloaded software is. And you can see the details here. You can see exactly which programs need to be updated. So here I have Firefox, Image Viewer, some libraries, and some other updates. So, and you can uncheck and check all of these to your liking. So I'm going to check all of these. And to install updates, you just have to click install now. And this will start updating your computer. And you also have to type in your password for this. I'm just going to type my password in and it should start updating. While it's updating, you can see exactly which applications are being updated and how much of it is done. So here, it's going pretty quickly, and this one is currently at 7%, and it's updating quickly. After it's done installing, it will apply those changes, and if you click on details, you should see this. So this is what you should see when all the software updates are done installing. And to complete it, you just have to click either Restart Later or Restart Now. Just make sure it restarts for the changes to apply. So the third thing you should do is install and apply any additional drivers. To do that, click on your launcher and type in Drivers and you should click on the additional drivers icon. Once that is loaded, the application will immediately start checking for available drivers. And you should see something like this. Under all the categories, check use driver. So it says do not use this device, check using processor microcode and keep doing this and check all the drivers. So here, I'll check it. 
and in this one this is a manually installed driver I also recommend checking these ones as well once you have checked all your drivers click apply changes and then enter your password and that should start applying the driver changes and usually no reboot is needed so it should finish and you should be ready to continue whatever else you are doing next up on the list is learning to use the inbuilt software application to go to your software application click on your launcher icon and type in Ubuntu and type in software and click on the Ubuntu software icon and once it loads up you should see something like this and in here you have three main tabs at the top the all installed and updates in the all tab you can search for any application that is on this software store so I'll sort search for something like GIMP which is a image editing tool and you'll be able to see GIMP so and if you want to install it you can just click the install button right here but if you want to learn more about it click over here in this area and it will bring up more information about it uh, reviews, website, how big the file is, and more. To install it, you can click install here and enter your password and it should start installing. And also over here you can see the progress of the installation. So when it's done, this bar should go away and you should just be left with the icon. The next tab is the installed tab. And here you can see all your installed applications. From here you can also uninstall or remove some applications. So to remove an application, all you have to do is click on the remove button. As you can see the GIMP has finished downloading and installing and I can open it right here. The third tab is updates tab. And in here you can see all your software updates and right now my software is up to date because I recently updated it but if you have software that is waiting to be updated it should show up here so next up on the list is similar to the last one but in this one we're going to be enabling additional or extra software repositories enabling this will let you install stuff from different sources so to enable it type in software in your launcher and click on software and updates once you're there go to the second tab other software and make sure you check both of these to check them you have to enter your password once these are both checked you can close and when you close it will give you a notification telling you that you have to reload your software sources so just click reload and it will load your software list and update it using the new sources that you just enabled. The sixth item on the list is opening up and using the terminal. Now there are three main ways to open the terminal. The first one is to go to your launcher icon and of course type in terminal. The second is to go to your desktop and right click and click open terminal. And the third way is to enter the keystroke control alt t and this will be bring up the terminal now you should get used to using the terminal because you'll be using it a lot in ubuntu or any linux based distribution for that matter so here's some basic commands cd will let you navigate into a different directory so you can do cd desktop to go to your desktop and to go back a directory, do cd space dot dot. To list all the files in your current directory, type ls. And this will show all my directories. So I can, again, cd to one of them. So documents, I'll do cd documents. And it'll bring me to documents. And if I do ls, well, it's showing nothing because I have nothing in my documents. But if you have something, it'll list those files. 
So that is one of the basic commands. And you also have one command that you use with another command, which is sudo. And sudo will let you run commands using root permissions. So for example, this will let you move something from your home folder to the root folder. So to use sudo, type sudo and then a command following it. I'm not going to go too much into the terminal commands in this tutorial, but you can always look it up. So next up on the list is adding your online accounts. To do this, go to your launcher icon and type in accounts and click on online accounts. Now here you'll be able to add accounts such as your Facebook, Flickr, and Google. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be adding my Google account. So enter in your login information. And once you're logged in, uh, Ubuntu will ask to ask for permissions, and you just have to allow those. So once you allow them, you'll see all these things appear in this app. So here you can check whether you want your photos, your email, and your files on your Ubuntu. And you can turn them off and on as you like. And you can also add other accounts by clicking this add account. So the next thing I like to do is install additional software. So I'm just going to click on the Ubuntu software icon. And a browser alternative that I like to use is Chromium, which is an open source version of Chrome. So I can just install that this way. And I also like to install GIMP, which is a photo editing program similar to Photoshop. Now you can install whichever program you like, because it's your computer, but I recommend installing these two. So nearing the end of the list at number 9, we have tweaking and customizing Ubuntu. So one of the most basic tweaks is changing the desktop background, which you can do by right-clicking on the desktop and clicking change desktop background. So I like this one, and this is pretty basic, so if you want to do something more advanced, you have to install something called Unity Tweak Tool. So go to Ubuntu Software, type in Tweak Tool, and make sure you install the Unity Tweak Tool, not another one. So click Install. And once that has been installed, you can open it up. And you'll see many customization options available to you. So you have Theme, customization so I can change it from default ambience to high contrast radiance and more which you can download online I can change the icons I can change the cursor so I have this one and you can also change the fonts now the pre-installed fonts are Ubuntu's fonts no surprise but you can change it to whatever you like now there are many more other tweaks available like hot corners which allows you to do something when you go into a certain corner and that's pretty helpful and you have tons of tweaks available here and if you go online you can also download many other themes so the last item on this list is enabling additional tweaks that make it easier to use Ubuntu the first of these tweaks is making the Unity Launcher, which is this bar right here, move to the bottom. To do this, open up the Unity Tweak Tool, and under Unity, click on Launcher, and under Appearance, you see Position, and here you can either click on Left or Bottom. Having it set to Bottom is especially nice for Windows users. It's very similar to Windows. And the second of these tweaks is making it so that application menus appear in the window bar by default. As you can see, the application menus like file and edit are not here by default. So to enable this, go to system settings and go to appearance, behavior, and in this column you can check in the windows title bar so that when you hover over it and click on this button you can see all the items in the menu. And if you want it so that it is always displayed rather than having it display when you hover over it, click
click Always Displayed under Menus Visibility, so that it is always there and easy to access. So that is it on this video of the top 10 things to do after installing Ubuntu. I hope you learned something new this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and thanks for watching.